sports fans we're back again this time without a beard uh, <clears throat> we are now installing the last two uh, let me get rid of this toothpick the last two um, pistons and rod assemblies on this 408 and here we are installing spiral locks I believe the spiral lock you see is a is a mild steel curly cue. It's like a continuous snap ring, and once it's in, it's impossible almost to get out. Very hard to get out. They're never going to come out because you overread the motor. Um, we took the rods apart in our wooden Stugatz rod vise over here, and. Uh, the thing you have to remember with these is we don't have them numbered. A lot of guys take stamps and they'll number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're not doing that. We we go by the numbers that, that are here. They match. You have to make sure there's alignment dowels here. They match the machine portion of the rod. It keeps the rods from going this way when they're high RPM. It's a very nice system. Uh, who makes these rods? Scat, I think, makes them. Yep. Anyway, um, we're now putting uh, the spiral lock in. To put a spiral lock in, it comes like this. <coughs> see, so you can see it's flat. You, you, you put your thumbnail under here, see, and you start stretching it out. We'll stretch this one out later. Anyway, I got this one already stretched out. So you, you pull it, you stretch it out like this. Don't worry about it. It's mild steel, nothing's going to happen. So what you do is you put the piston like this, you start the one spiral, like you see the edge in there, it's machined out for the width of the spiral lock. So you put the one end in like so, you see it going in there, and then you push it down with your thumb. Then I like to take a screwdriver, other guys do it with their, with their uh, fingers, but once you get it started, You push it in. Why don't you put it so it's easier for you, then we can show them. Yeah, yeah there, it's starting. A little hard to start sometimes there. Now once you get the first revolution in, say, you push it out, you, you just go around, you get the first revolution, okay, then it's nothing. You just follow it around, okay, and it goes in that groove. Whoops goes in the grooves. Keep following it around. Don't stab yourself. Yeah, you don't have to worry about, you know, scratching the wrist pin bore because the wrist pin's never going to get out here. See? So it doesn't really matter. So all you want to do is get this turkey in here so it's like this see? and it snaps in there. Boom. See? Now you look at it. Now look at that. You'll never get that out of there. And if you have to get it out, you take your screwdriver and you can see that little slot right there. See how the screwdriver fits in? And you can bend it out, get it out. See? And that's it. So now, we put the wrist pin. What happened to our wrist pin? Here it is. You put a little assembly lube on the... You drop, put a drop in there and a little drop in there. Oh yeah, that's a drop. Yeah, anyway, you smear it around your finger. Your finger is an excellent tool. And that's it. There you go. Then you take the wrist pin, slide it in, get it started. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure your piston is in the right spot. You want the reliefs at the top. If they have reliefs. Yeah, if they have reliefs. Okay, right. And sometimes they'll have assembly notches. You know, like the stock Ford piston will have a notch that faces forward. This doesn't have that. These are, I don't know who makes these. Weisco. Weisco. Anyway, Weisco, very good uh, piston company near where I live in Cleveland, Ohio. Anyway, this is oriented to the top. Then you take your rod without the chamfer on it. You look at the rod and you can see a big chamfer here. And if you turn the rod over, you see it's pretty flat. Now when a rod is oriented towards the connecting rod, you can see it over here. The chamfer has to be where the radius is on the crankshaft, like so. If you 
put the rod in backwards like this, then it's going to rub where the chamfer is here because there's no machine area here, see? So will the engine run? Yeah, but it's not going to run good because there'll be extra friction here. May not run long. Yeah, yeah, it won't be good. <laughs> anyway, that's not a good thing. Anyway, the rod goes on like this. So when you're orienting your piston, you put it up here and you look down the bore and you say, oh, there, there's where the thing goes. There's where the chamfer is. The chamfer has to go here because it's over here on the uh, on the crankshaft. So it's over here. You put it up here like so. You stick it in, and you you know you have it right. You bring it back to your work table, and you just slide that turk in. And you should put probably a little assembly lube on here. It won't hurt nothing. Oh, here, here. Now you can see there's an oil hole on here, and the oil hole will facilitate. Uh, it's tapered here, so when the engine's running, the throw-off lubricates the wrist pin from uh, basic gravity. There's, this is not under pressure. Anyway, we're now going to put the other spiral lock in, and we'll go from there. <clears throat> so we stretch it out, like before. same way. Put the end in there. Work it around. There you go. First revolution. Keep pushing it in. Pulls around. And here we go here. I think my wife wants to be a YouTube star. Absolutely. Absolutely. snapped in so when you look straight down in that piston bore I mean the wrist pin bore you can see that it's all seated in that groove that's what you want it's pretty hard to mess them up really yeah so here we are this pistons ready so now what we're gonna do is we have our rings gapped I gapped them previously and they're ready to fly so the oil ring goes on like so. There's an expander. What I like to do is put the put the oil ring expander approximately in the middle of the of the skirt, the width of the skirt here. So you can see it. It's actually hard to see. But you see you see that gap there? You see they're kind of like folded like a goofy looking animal. See? You actually see there there's the gap. And you can see where they close together and so you know it's approximately here you want to put your bottom rail on with the gap over here so you start over here you put the thing in like so and then you go around now you have to make sure that, that the thing is butted here see see there it went over the top you get it butted like this and you go around push it in Make sure that the ends are butted here. Where you can see the little goofy M there. It's kind of hard to see. see but the, it's different than the rest. You'll, you you could put your glasses on, you'll be fine. <laughs> anyway, you got the gap over there, and you want the other gap. One gap's here. You want the other gap. There's the, the where the expander butts. You want the other gap over here. You do not want to put them together for Why obvious it? reasons. Why is the that? reason is that you'll use more oil if the gaps are lined up. Now you have to remember that the the, the uh, engine has a crosshatch on the cylinders. And the crosshatch promotes 
ring sealing and rotation. The rings will rotate as the engine runs. So now we're doing the second ring. You want to be a YouTube star? The uh, second ring goes with the little goofy N here to the top. M. M? Yeah, isn't it M? N, N. I'm not that blind. Oh, N, okay. I'm pretty blind, but I'm not. Blind. All right, just check it. Anyway, where's our little goofy? This is our little end gap uh, tool here. Liam is the future engine builder over here. We're yeah, going to start him on Briggs and Stratton. Yep. Which five. Anyway, you, you open this up and you put it on so that it's on a second groove. And then push it down here. And there it is. Second ring. Now the top ring is a steel ductile, I don't know what it is. It's probably got some molly coating, whatever it is. There's an N on the top. Where is it? There it is. That N? Yeah. Right there. See it? Not really. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, yeah you I can, can see, see it. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Same deal. And <clears throat> Now, you want the rings 180 degrees apart on the top. Now, you know they're going to rotate, so you don't really worry about it too much. But that's how you want to start. There it is. There we go. They're approximately 180 apart. And we put a little oil on it. You don't have to go hog wild with the oil. Yeah, yeah. anybody that goes hog wild with the oil is crazy. Well, because the, the throw off from the connecting rods will lubricate this. Yeah. And uh, that's it. Anyway, I finger them around that. a little bit. And you put it down here. And you you take the ring compressor. The ring compressor is tapered. So the tapered part, obviously the big part, goes this way because you're going to push the ring in the other direction. So you get the rings <coughs> started. Sometimes they come out of the groove. But you wiggle it around. A tapered ring compressor makes the assembly, you know, much right. easier than those old-fashioned uh, screw or right. those crank type um, yeah. piston ring compressors. Those are, those are garbage. But you have to take your time with this and get the ring in the groove while you're getting the compressor on, like so. So you know, once you start it, it starts down the taper, it pushes the ring in the groove. And then you line it up with the bottom of the skirt here, which is what I like to do. So you can see it. It's about the same distance here as it is here. See? So you know you got it started. Then you put your bearing in. I don't know if you got any bearings. You got bearings? Here we go. Okay. Magically appeared. Yeah, you got bearings. You put the bearing in with the tab. The tab goes in here, like so. And then you push it in so it's flush. Whoops. You push the piston down here. You didn't want to do that. Now, what are these for? What are these for? That's just the paper one. And then we'll put a little drop of assembly lube on there. And then you put it and checking again that you have whoop. Oh drunk. Grandpa can't stand up straight. Anyway. <laughs> One too many beer with the pizza. Anyway, there's the chamfer. There's the cheek of the rod there. So we know we have that right, and we know we have the reliefs at the top with the rest of them. So you put this in, slide it in. I don't know why this is starting here. There it is, okay. And you put it in now, get the ring compressor square with the block. And you get your your valve reliefs lined up here, you know, as much as you can. This might be a little off. Turn it a little bit. You can turn it a little bit. And then you push this down. You have your assistant guide the rod in. Well, the main smacker takes his wood hammer and he pushes down and then he goes in. Once you get it started, then you just kind of push it home. The guy over there with the camera is watching the ride as it comes down. Keep going. Feel it 
the side. And that's uh, that's uh, piston installation. Then you flip the block over, like so. Oh my God! What the hell? Anyway, <laughs> Grandpa ain't got any more strength. Should have sprung for aluminum. <laughs> anyway, you push like hell, and you get it up here like so. So there you see. You can look down here, and you can see that chamfer. And you can see there's plenty of room for this radius to clear the rod because the rod has to move a little bit like this. See, you can see these. See how they move? See, this one moves. See, we screwed up on the first one. We had it backwards. We had to take it apart and fix it, but now it moves good. So we have everything right. So now we put the bearing in the cap. What happened? We lost our cap. You don't know what's, what's happening here. Is this the right cap? Probably not. Anyway. You don't know what the cap is. You got to look for the numbers. This is a 5015. I don't know what that is. What is it? 5015. Okay, so this is the right cap. You put the bearing in. You line the tabs up. You put it in. It's pretty self-explanatory. Push it down. Put a drop of assembly stuff on. Smear it around. Now the cap. The numbers line up. There's the numbers. Yep. Here's the number 5015. Put it on. Now you line the rod dowels up till they get started. And you take your wooden hammer and give it a little smack. So, so they get started. And then you put the bolts in. These two bolts here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, this is my favorite grandchild over here. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Uh, Liam is the oldest grandchild. And he's a budding engine builder. <laughs> he's four. Mm -hmm. And he's very inquisitive. I'm going to start him on Briggs and Stratton soon. Anyway, what happened to the little spin job? Anyway, we have a little, uh, a little uh, Japanese device here. You love Japs. And we spin them on. You go back and forth. You can see the the dowels will start and you just torque it a little bit because you're going to come back later after you do the rods and torque them all. Anyway that's piston and rod installation from the sports fan. <laughs> so that's uh, that's how we're going to do it. We're going to finish it up and we, uh, up. we got one more to go. One more to go and um, probably do the uh, Pick we'll, up. Probably, uh, we'll probably do cam installation and then we're going to put the roller lifters in and uh, we'll put the heads on. Alright, we'll be back. Say bye, Liam. Bye.